Hello everybody, welcome back to Fallout 4. Right, let's jump back in our body. Bloop. Here we go into the memory den. Come on, Nick. Hello? What was already in it? Sister Valentine. I thought you had forgotten about the lonely. May have walked out of the den, Irma, but I'd never walk out on you. Hmm. Amari's downstairs, you big fool. <laughs> Come on, Nick. How do we get downstairs? Here for Amari. Who here? Hello. Dr. Amari? Yes. I take it this isn't a social call. Um let Nick explain. All yours, Nick. We need a memory dig, Amari. It's not gonna be easy. The perp, Kellogg, is already cold on the floor. Are you so mad? Putting aside the fact that you're asking me to defile a corpse. You don't realize that the memory simulators require intact living brains to function. Mm, please help us. Please. Nick told me you're the only one who can make this work. This dead brain had inside knowledge of the Institute, Amari. The biggest scientific secret of the Commonwealth. You need this. And so do we. Fine. I'll take a look. But no guarantees. Do you have it with you? Uh, here you go. Here's what I could find. What's this? This isn't a brain. This is... Wait. That's the hippocampus. And this thing attached to it? A neural interface? Ah, those circuits look awfully familiar. I'm not surprised. From what I've seen, all Institute technology has a similar architecture. Come on. Go on, Doctor. Mr. Valentine is an older generation synth. But Institute technology being what it is, the brain implant could fit him. But that's an incredible risk to take. We're talking about wiring something to his brain. Don't worry about me, Amari. I'm well past the warranty date anyway. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. I appreciate this, Nick. You can thank me when we've found your son. All right, let's do this. He's a good boy. Just sit down. If I start cackling like an old grizzled mercenary, pull me out, okay? Let's see here. I need you to keep talking to me, Mr. Valentine. Any slight change in your cognitive functions could be dying. Are you feeling any different? There's a lot of flashes. Static. I, I, I can't make sense of any of it, Doc. That's what I was afraid of. The mnemonic impressions are encoded. It appears the Institute has one last failsafe. There's a lock on the memories in the implant. So wait, break it. Tell me you have a way past this, Doc. Let me think. The encryption is too strong for a single mind. But what if we use two? We load both you and Mr. Valentine into the memory lounger. Run your cognitive functions in parallel. He'll act as a host while your consciousness drives through whatever memories we can find. Let's do it. All right. Let's get started. Just sit down over there and keep your fingers crossed. Okay, my fingers are crossed when I'm sitting here. Looks quite comfy. Ah, please stand by. I can't move. can't look around. Come on. Initiating brainwave migration between the transplant and the host. Mnemonic activity coming from the transplant. It's degenerated, but it's there. We're going to load you into the strongest memories we can find. They might not be stable. Just hold on. Okay. Can you hear me? Ah, good. The simulation appears to be working, although the memories are quite fragmentary. I'll try to step you through the intact memories and hope we find one 
that gives us some clue to the Institute's location. Okay, so what am I supposed to be doing? Oh. There. This is the earliest intact memory I can find. such a dummy back then. What did I know about how the world worked? I think now she wanted me to kill him. I should have. Instead, Remember, I ended up running away. You are away. experiencing these memories as Kellogg. I told myself I wanted this to find somewhere out course. from under the thumb of the NCR and all their rules. But really, I was running from the guilt of not protecting her from Dad. Yeah, it doesn't matter now, though. Hmm. Where's that? Dad was either drunk or not around. I guess he must have run with one of the raider gangs, but I never really knew what he did. Don't know why Mom was with him. Maybe at some point in his life he wasn't a complete asshole. <laughs> Mom? Mom knew how it was. She wasn't soft, but uh, she loved me in her way. And she protected me from Dad. <laughs> that cost her more than a few beatings. I never knew what happened to her after I left. I didn't want to know. Not then. Mm hmm. So, what we doing? This doesn't seem to be what we're looking for. There appears to be another intact memory close to you in temporal sequence. There. Where? Oh, here. Try that one. Me. The thing about happiness is you only know you had it when it's gone. I mean, you, you may think to yourself that you're happy, but... Uh, you don't really believe it. Focus on the petty bullshit or next job or whatever. It's only looking back by comparison with what comes after that you really understand that's what happiness felt like. So he's had a child. I thought San Francisco was my chance to start fresh. I was the hot shit, the gunslinger from the hub, rolling into town with the world at my feet. Everybody knew I was the one who'd shot Valdez. I could write my own ticket to any outfit in town. It all worked out pretty damn well. For a while. Hmm. Miss Sarah. I was the worst thing that ever happened to her. <laughs> if she'd never met me, she just stayed in the hub, maybe hooked up with someone who didn't kill people for a living. Probably been happier than she was with me. Almost certainly lived longer. Nice. Whatever made me think that a guy like me should have a daughter? No, I never deserved her. Not for one second. Okay. Next one. Let's keep looking. I'll connect you to the next intact memory. Thank you. How did you think this was going to end, Kellogg? Um. <laughs> you thought you could just fuck with us, and we wouldn't fuck with you. Just so you know, they died like dogs. And you weren't there to help them. Okay. I found another memory to try. I'll connect you. Let's go. Can't run, which is a pain. What's up here? 
Look at her. Mind if we sit down? Sit yourself. I didn't care where I was going. Ended up mostly wandering east. Getting as far away from San Francisco as I could, maybe. There's always someone who wanted someone else dead. Sometimes just roughed up, but uh, dead was usually what they wanted. Sometimes they thought they could cheat me. That was usually only when I first arrived somewhere. Didn't matter to me. They just took it as part of the job. A little extra thrown in for free. I always got paid in the end. One way or another. Mm -hmm. I don't remember much from that time. It all kind of blends together. It was almost always a bar, though. That's universal. Okay. So he's a hitman. Getting closer. Try this next one. What's going on over here? Mr. Kellogg, I'm glad you decided to meet with me. I finally ended up in the Commonwealth. I kind of ran out of road. Plus, I'd come to terms with life. I wasn't going to be stupid enough to get mixed up with caring about other people again. It was just me against the world. And the world had it coming. Mm -hmm. So, you're with the Institute. You heard all sorts of rumors about the Institute. But I figured they were just a convenient boogeyman for anything bad that ever happened. They were real, all right. They didn't know anything about operating on the surface. Relied on their synths for everything. They had the resources I needed. And I had the expertise they needed. It turned into a permanent arrangement. It suited me just fine. The first synths weren't all that impressive. I'm good, but I'm not that good. But the Institute could always make more. And kept making them better each time. They still give me the creeps, but... You have to get used to them if you want to work with the Institute. Myself, if you really existed. We do, as you can see. What do you want? It's come to my attention that you've been rather disruptive of our... Hmm, shall we watch this or shall we carry on? This must stop. I do what people pay me to do. That's a problem for you. I can see only one way out. And what's that, Mr. Kellogg? If I'm working for you, there's no more problem. From what I hear, you can afford me. I don't think you fully understand the situation you're in. I think I do. Very well. B-748, initiate. <laughs> Oh, that was easy. Hmm, impressive. We may have something to talk about after all. Getting warmer. One of these has got to tell us something. Let's carry on then. We're running out of brain fuel. Ah. ah, there's one that looks mostly intact. Connecting now. Mm, here it is. Manual override initiated. Cryogenic stasis. Suspended. All computers are still working. That's good. Checking through the logs. Hopefully it's all just find it. Pod C6. Down the hall. I was now the Institute's main operator in the Commonwealth. If they needed something done, they came to me. It wasn't usual for anybody from the Institute to come along on a mission, so this one stood out. I didn't know then who it was we were grabbing from the vault. Of course, neither did they. Not really. Mm -hmm. The eggheads never liked taking orders from a dirty, contaminated degenerate like me. 
But they needed me. And I made sure they knew it. Even then, I knew it was a mistake leaving him alive. So you right. I understood that kind of revenge. No one better. But I was cocky enough to assume I could handle some soft pre-war vault dweller. Even if he somehow got thawed out. At least I know those institute bastards will soon get what's coming to them, too. If he could take me out, they won't be able to hide from him for long. That's all right, boy. I'm glad I didn't have to kill the kid. I'm not saying I haven't done it, but uh, I never liked to. And yeah, I guess it did remind me of uh, her. Yeah, I'm a cold-hearted bastard for sure, but uh, I'm still human. Mm -hmm. Better this way, though. Better than taking her kid and leaving her alive. Really? I'm not sure where to watch from. This is the one. Here. Open it. I never knew why we didn't just refreeze the rest of them. But we had our orders. <laughs> Guess the old man didn't want so many loose ends. Too bad he left alive the one person he shouldn't have. Hmm, me. <laughs> sure. Are we okay? Almost. Hello. Seem that to cryogenic sequence. We don't seem that freaked out by it, do we? What's the hold up? I'm almost finished, Kellogg. I just need to confirm. All right, we're good. I'm uh, I'm sorry you had to go through that again. I found another intact memory. Let's go then. Whenever you're ready. Sure. Was that your son? It wasn't my idea to settle down with the kid in the middle of Diamond City. So, good news, I think. <laughs> I thought it was a terrible idea, actually. But it was one of the old man's pet projects, so here we were. Me and the kid. Like a happy little family. I ended up kind of liking it. A reminder of what my life might have been if things had... Turned out differently. But there's no going back. I knew it was just temporary. It'd be back to normal business before too long. This whole setup in Diamond City was part of some elaborate plan of the old man's. Seems obvious now that we were bait for our friend from the vault. Timing couldn't have been an accident. It's not how the old man works. I wonder if he outsmarted me in the end. Another loose end tied up. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> sure. Hello. Can you not grab these comics? No. Hello. Oh. It's okay. The new breed of synths could easily pass as human. Some of them did. But the coursers, they weren't built to blend in. They were killing machines, pure and simple. Smarter, 
stronger and faster than almost any real human. I'm just glad they were always on my side. One of these days, you're gonna get your head blown off just barging in here like that. Minimizing my exposure to civilians is a priority. Forget I said anything. So what's the big crisis this time? New orders for you. One of our scientists has left the Institute. Left? As in? He's gone rogue. Name's Dr. Brian Virgil. We know he's hiding somewhere in the glowing sea. Here's his file. Mm. Well, the heads are gonna roll for this. Capture and return, or just elimination? Elimination. He was working on a highly classified program. No kidding. One of the top bioscience boys? Damn. So, I guess you're taking the kid back with you. Affirmative. Your only mission is to locate and eliminate Virgil. You're taking me home to my father? Yes. Stand next to me and hold still. Okay. Hmm. Is that, is that a boy? Where did the Oh, he's there. That's a wall there. Where are you going? X688. Ready to relay with Sean. Bye, Mr. Kellogg. I hope I see you again soon. Oh, freaking out. Bye. Said that too late, Kellogg. Teleportation. Now it all makes sense. Nobody's found the entrance to the Institute because there is no entrance. Let me pull you out of there as soon as you're ready. Okay. I'm ready. Hello. Oh, I see. That was a nice trip down memory lane, wasn't it? So, we've obviously got to go to the glowing sea. Oh, sorry, exit memory. Yeah, you've got to go to the glowing sea and try and find that uh, scientist, I'm assuming. <coughs> Where's Nick? How do you feel? Fine. I'm okay, Doctor. Thank you. That's good. But I want you to keep monitoring yourself. We have to be sure there's no long term damage. Are you ready to talk about what happened in there? We got what we needed. The Institute uses teleportation to get in and out. Yes. Their greatest secret has finally been revealed. But that only leads to more questions. How does it work? Where do we go next? That scientist Kellogg was supposed to track down. Virgil, we need to find him. You're right. A rogue institute scientist could answer all kinds of questions. Where did the memory say he was? The glowing sea? That doesn't make sense. No one goes there. Not even if they were desperate. I'll find him. If we need to find Virgil, then I'm going after him. If you're going to go, be prepared. You'll need some way to combat the radiation there. It's called the Glowing Sea for a reason. Hmm. How do I fight that much radiation, Doctor? There are chemical compounds. Radex, Radaway. You'd need as much as you could carry. Maybe more. Great. A sealed environment suit would be great if you could find one. Or maybe one of those suits of power armor. That would be perfect. We'll find, find a way to get through the rads. Don't worry. Good luck and be safe. By the way, I unplugged Mr. Valentine first. Removed the implant while you were waking up. He's waiting for you upstairs. He's a good lad, isn't he? Can we nick some of this stuff? Are we stealing it? I don't know if we're stealing this stuff or just. Oh, there's a comic there. Excellent. Lovely. Includes the Rognog the Gargat Barbarian Hollow Game. Excellent. Oh, we didn't want Dirty War. Have you got any more right away? Red X, whatever it's called. Hmm. 
Hmm. Anything, Doctor, we can take? No, I think that's it. Cheers, miss. Oh, well done, guys. Alright, sorry about that, guys. Phone call. Alright, let's get back on with the game. Nick, where are you? You know, sweet thing. Get out of here, you sturdy cow. Nick. Hey, Valentine. Hope you got what you were looking for inside my head. <laughs> that was right. I should have killed you when you were on ice. Oh, Jesus. Kellogg? Is that you? What? What are you talking about? You sounded like Kellogg just then. Did I? Huh. Mari said there might be some mnemonic impressions left over. Anyway, I feel fine, so let's get going. Hmm. Take him. I'm not too sure if I completely trust him now, after that little uh, thing. Let's get out of here. Alright. Oh, I would always press that. We're going to the... Glowing Sea. It's all the way down here. Freaking hell. That's the nearest point we've got to. Diamond C. Or should we go from here? Let's just fast travel there. We're going to see if we can make our way towards it. See if we can find somewhere a bit closer so we can fast travel to. Right. Which way is it? This way. Come on, Nick. Yeah, what I want to do is get as close to the glowing sea as possible and fast travel back to the red rocket to get our power suit because I don't want to uh, use up the fusion core in it just get into the glowing city or glowing sea but I'm going to have to end this video soon um, there ain't nothing in here is there I hope there's not one of them Bear things. Anything here? I'm not worried about that. Come, Nick. The hell's that? Oh, f oh bollocks, it's a fucking death claw. Where the hell did he come from? We're never going to be out beating with just the crap we got here. Nick, you're on your own, mate. I'm running. And I can't run, so I've got any AP. There's nothing around here. There's a house. What house is? Which we can't get in. God knows where that death clock came from. Poor old Nick's dead. What's this place over here? Is that thing going to attack me? Quick, 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 quick. Let's just quickly do a quick save. Oh, Nick, you're still alive. Did you kill the Death Claw? Is it running after you? We leveled up. We'll do that. Probably next episode. Oh shit, getting radiated already. I can 
definitely a gun shot somewhere. Oh, fuck. What's in here? Which way are we going this way? How close are we to it? No, oh, still no, not too far. See if we can make it in this episode. Electrical hobbyist club. Oh fucking thirty three bloody rats. I think maybe that's a place to have a look at when we've got our power suit. Alright, let's do another quick save. Now we've found this place. And how far away are we? Not too far. Keep going. Oh, I need my attack points. Come on, attack points. Come on. Is this it? This must be it. No, we're still fucking miles away. This must be the glowing sea. Um, one there, one there. All right, guys, what I think I'm going to have to do is fast travel back home. Get that power suit, but for now, I think I'm going to end the video. I'd just like to thank you all very much for watching. This is Red Fox signing out.